Christensen. I am the marketing manager here for North America and your moderator for today's session. Before diving in, I would like to inform you that our session is being recorded so we can share the video for you on our YouTube channel uh, later this week. And as we get into content, you may have some questions or need clarification about something, which is great. Uh, there is a chat function within WebEx and you can submit a question to me and we will reserve the last five to 10 minutes of the session uh, so we can address any questions that you have. So with that, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our presenter for today's Tech Talk, Tom Meckler. He is our Regional Marketing Manager for North America. He is focused on our intrusion products, and he has over 35 plus years, not only within the industry, but also with the Bosch organization. He focuses on marketing, product management, sales, technical support, and product training and installation. So he specializes, Tom, in adapting today's technology to the needs of our alarm industry. So thank you, Tom, for being here today, and I will pass it over to you. Thanks, Elizabeth, and thanks to everyone who's joining today. We appreciate your taking a little time out of your Tuesday afternoon to talk detectors with us. Bosch makes a lot of different intrusion detectors. We make motion detectors. That, that's what we make the most of. We also make intrusion detectors like glass break detectors and seismic detectors. But today, we're going to focus on motion detectors, which are, of course, detectors that detect motion. This is a quick overview of our family of detectors. Of course, we have wall mount detectors, ceiling mount, outdoor detectors, some specialty detectors here and there. And there's a lot of features, benefits, and technology that go into a detector to make it a really good detector, to make it a really good product and a tool for you. First, I'd like to introduce some of our families of detectors, starting with the blue line detector. You're probably familiar with the blue line detector and its ability to ignore animals up to 100 pounds. It really will ignore a 100 pound Rottweiler and it really will catch a 100 pound burglar. If you don't believe me, try it. We've, we've, we've done it multiple times. Blue line detectors are designed for residential and small commercial applications. Applications that might be up to 40 by 40 feet. They maybe not have a high level of false alarm sources within the environment. Uh, catch performance is of course a requirement, but up to 40 by 40 feet. And we have two families, if you will, of blue line detectors. We have the PIRs, which are really just a passive infrared detector. We have a quad, which is a dual passive infrared detector. Not enough time to go into all the details there. And then we have our TriTech, which includes our PIR microwave. And we actually have two of those, one for a shorter range application up to 20 feet and one for up to 40 by 40 feet. The next level detector in our family is our commercial series. And our commercial series is designed for your most common commercial applications, supermarkets, warehouses, schools, clothing stores, jewelry stores, you name it, those types of commercial applications that have a larger area up to 50 by 50 feet might have a more difficult environment from a false alarm standpoint and catch performance is really important. A couple things that are that are featured in our commercial series that are important about catch performance. One is our cloak and camouflage detection technology. What this allows us to do is catch a, an intruder who might be trying to cover up their signal. Maybe they're wearing a hoodie, maybe they're wearing a coat. We'll talk about that technology as we go a little further into the presentation. And also anti-mask detection. What anti-mask detection allows us to do is catch when somebody's trying to trick the detector, put a hat over it, put a box over it, and try to break in because it won't be able to see them anymore. We're gonna talk about how that works a little later as well. Our top of the line wall mount detectors are professional series. And our professional series are designed for really high security applications, really difficult applications, banking, jewelry stores, high-end clothing stores, warehouses where you might have a lot of false alarm activity. The professional series is really the highest end detector you can get in a wall mount category. One of the things that is featured in our professional series is sensor data fusion. And what that means is we actually take signals from multiple different sensors within the detector to make an alarm decision. PIR, microwave, 
temperature compensation, white light detection, all these things combine in our process to allow us to make a really intelligent alarm decision, ignore the false alarm, catch the bad guy. That's the whole trick, right? That's why you're here. Our professional series also feature trifocus optics, which means that they have multiple optics, multiple focal lengths that allow us to have a more uniform uh, signal from our target, which allows us to do a better job of catching the bad guy again and reducing false alarms. It's really the combination of all those technologies that provide the detector with the best uh, catch performance and the highest false alarm immunity on the market. Ceiling mount detectors. You do use a ceiling mount detector where you can't use a wall mount detector. It, it seems obvious, but uh, if you can't find a good place on the wall or the coverage area changes, think about a clothing store or a department store where the displays are moving around, an office area where they might change the cubicles or whatever. Putting a detector on the ceiling, looking down over that can continue to give you uh, the type of catch performance you're looking for. And we have two different families of our ceiling mount detectors, our low profile detector, which is that DS936. That'll actually just hide right up in a, in a round or octagonal box right up in the ceiling. You hardly even see it. And then our high performance uh, TriTech and PIR, our ceiling mount DS939, DS9370, 9371, the black one, those can go up to a ceiling as high as 20 feet. Why would we make a black one, you ask? Well, go to a restaurant, go to a high-end store and look up at the ceiling. It's black and all those white detectors are all over it. Wouldn't it be nice if you put a detector up there and no one can see? That's why we make the 9371. Another motion detector, intrusion detector, is an outdoor detector, the OD850. This detector is designed to detect an area of about 50 by 50 feet. It's really designed for an enclosed area that's outdoors, that loading dock, that front vestibule, those types of applications. They're outdoors, but you still would be able to, would like to be able to detect if someone enters that area. Outdoor detectors need to work a little differently than indoor detectors because the types of false alarm sources you have outdoors are quite different. Drafts are more severe, temperature changes are more severe, uh, movements from trees and plants, those kinds of things can cause false alarms. So we have special technology in our outdoor Tritex that ignores those things uh, specifically for outdoor environments. Another type of motion detector that is not an intrusion detector, but it's a motion detector, is a request to exit detector. And Bosch makes the DS160, which is really the, the premier request to exit detector on the market. These detectors work with your access control system. So the way we use access control systems here in North America typically is we use our card you know, to enter the building or to go through the door to get on, on our way in, and we can just walk out. Well, we can just walk out because the motion detector, the request to exit detector, detects us and signals the access control system to open the door for us. That's what it does, right? Sounds simple, but there's a lot to it. The detection coverage area needs to be optimized for that type of application, so you're not opening the door every time somebody walks down the hallway. And also things that improve the, the security of that application, uh, like the Bosch exclusive sequential logic input. They can detect if somebody's trying to trick the detector from outside to let themselves in. Uh, we have that feature to provide higher security even in an access control application. Some of the features and technologies that go into our detectors, we're gonna go into this uh, further as we move forward. But we have the best wall-to-wall -wall coverage in the industry. If you mount that detector in the corner, it's really gonna cover a full 90 degree area where it's gonna cover that entire room all the way up to the wall itself. You can't sneak under a Bosch detector. You can't sneak by a Bosch detector. First step processing. This is a Bosch exclusive processing technology that allows us to catch the bad guy on the first step when they first enter the room. It's really amazing stuff. We'll talk about that in detail a little later on. Dynamic temperature compensation. Our detectors are constantly measuring the temperature of the room. And when the temperature gets close to human body temperature, they adjust to make sure we have consistent catch performance. 
TriTech technology. What's a TriTech? Well, TriTech is a combination of a passive infrared detector, a microwave detector, and advanced processing. So we take each of these raw technologies and then we put our best processing on top of it, which really provides a detector that virtually eliminates false alarms and has the best catch performance in the industry. Cloak and camouflage detection, that's the ability to catch someone when they're trying not to get caught. Burglars have gotten smart and they've, uh, they've learned that, hey, if I put a hoodie on, it's harder for me to get caught. If I put a jacket on, it's harder for me to get caught. Unless you're using a Bosch detector with cloak and camouflage detection. I can tell you the truth. I know these detectors better than anybody. I can't get by one of our detectors in a hoodie. And I've tried just to make sure we're going to catch the bad guy every time. A sealed optical chamber. Back in the day, we didn't always have our, our, our optical chamber sealed. And what that means is the detector would be free to have drafts, insects crawl across it in case an insect gets inside the detector. Those cause false alarms. So we now have mechanics to make sure that whole area is sealed off from the rest of the detector so you can't get a false alarm from that. Uh, selectable PIR sensitivity. Some of our detectors, if it makes sense for the application, have the ability to set the sensitivity based upon uh, catch performance requirements. Pet immunity. Our pet immunity is, is the best in the business. Again, we can uh, catch a 100-pound burglar and ignore a 100-pound dog at the same time. And with our detectors, you can actually turn that feature off in the pet immune product. Why did we do that? Well, when we introduced our pet immune products to the market, people started using them in commercial applications because they had such good false alarm immunity. Then the guy in the hoodie came along and we found that, well, you know, you can't have that kind of catch performance and that kind of pet immunity at the same time. So for commercial applications, you can actually turn off the pet immunity on our detectors and still get that commercial series type of performance uh, and still catch the guy in the hoodie. Microwave adaptive processing, we'll talk about that in a, a little further detail later. But what that allows us to do is measure the microwave signal and adjust its sensitivity to background disturbances. There's always some sort of microwave noise out there. And, and if you stop and listen to your own room, whatever you're in right now, you might be hearing a fan from your air conditioner. Maybe you have a ceiling fan overhead. Or maybe there's fluorescent lights there, you won't hear them, but the microwave will, the microwave will see them. Well, our detectors can adjust to that and make sure they don't affect the catch performance or the false alarm immunity. So some of the technology that goes into a Bosch detector, some of those things just make it easier to install. That's really important because if you make it easier to install, there's a couple benefits that you get from that. One is you save money by saving time. It takes as much as 45% less time to install a Bosch detector than it does some of our competitors. So let's say that's five minutes per detector. And let's say you're installing maybe 20 or so detectors. Think of the math, think of that labor savings just in saving that five or, or, five or six minutes per detector. Now think about Making it easier to install also means making it easier to install correctly, which means that you have less problems later and less callbacks. How do we achieve this? Things like we have a look down lens in our detectors. Well, that can be turned on and off with a switch. Uh, all the optics, all the electronics in our detectors are behind a sealed cover. So that prevents damage. So you're not going to have someone zap it. They walk across the carpet and, and zap, the, zap the electronics. Uh, they're going to they slip with a screwdriver and, and break off a component. The self-locking cover, if you've ever installed another uh, manufacturer's detector, they often come with these tiny little screws that you screw into the bottom to hold them together. Drop that screw from a ladder and you'll never see it again, right? We don't have that. We have a self-locking system that locks that detector together. You still need a screwdriver to take it apart, but it snaps together very nicely, very easily. Custom terminal strips. Again, this sounds simple, but the terminal strip is the cause of a lot of false alarms out there. A cheap terminal strip, you connect that wire, you think it's connected, the building shifts or settles a little bit, that wire becomes loose and you get a false alarm. You blame it on the detector, but it was actually a loose wire. 
Bosch has custom lift gate terminals that come down and clamp on that wire that'll that eliminate the chance that it's going to pop out. If that wire's in there, it's in there. It ain't coming out. We even include a bubble level with our detector, and that does two things for you. Make sure it's level on the wall so it looks nice. I need this. All the pictures in my house are, are crooked if you ever come to my house because I can't see things like that. Also, when the detector's on the wall to make sure that you have good catch performance, you want to make sure that it's level. That's not a problem. Usually most walls are level, but if you put it on a bracket, you want to make sure that it's level to make sure that it has the catch performance that we advertise. And flexible mounting height. Uh, with some of our competitors, you need to adjust the board of the detector, or point it down if you move it up, and point it up if you move it down. With a Bosch detector, you put it on the wall. If we say you can mount it from seven to nine feet or seven to 10 feet, stick it on the wall from seven to 10 feet, and it's going to work the same way every single time. You don't need to make any adjustments. One of the things that goes into a really high quality detector is its optics. And Bosch has custom optics. We design all our own optics. Our optics are only made for us. And why is that important? Well, think about taking a picture with your cell phone or, 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 or an older cell phone. I guess cell phones are pretty good today compared to a really good high quality camera and how much of a better picture you get from a really good high quality camera. Well, if you equate that to a motion detector, that better picture or that better signal is a signal that we can process and we can do a better job of processing the signal because we have better optics. This drawing really kind of illustrates that where you can see this chart on the top right is the signal that comes out of a Bosch detector. Look how big that signal is. Imagine if you were trying to figure out what that what caused that if you were processing and you were trying to say, hey, what's this thing? You had to compare that one to the one on the bottom from one of our competitors. Which one are you going to do a better job of? Clearly the Bosch one, because you get a better signal. So it all starts with a better signal that is easier to process. And then, of course, you have to start processing. And Bosch has what we call our first step processing, which allows us to catch burglars or people, even if they're not burglars, on the first step, on the first pulse. Some of our competitors use pulse count detection. And because of that, they have to have multiple pulse counts in order to cause an alarm. This means you could basically walk across the room until you're detected, whereas the Bosch detector detects you on the first pulse on the first step. That's why we call it first step processing. At the same time, because of the way those pulse count detectors work, they work on a lower threshold. So something moving around, a small animal, even a draft or signal from a space heater, can cause a false alarm where it doesn't on the Bosch detector that has better processing. Temperature compensation. If you look at this picture, you might not be able to tell exactly what it is, but that image on the left, that infrared image, is actually the test robot from our development lab. The picture on the right is one of our engineering technicians, an actual person. Look how close they are. You can see the very bright yellow color on the top, the head, that's a very hot signal. And as it gets lower to where, where their, their clothes are, you can see a lower uh, temperature signal. So we have this robot in our test lab that allows us to do a very accurate test of our detectors at multiple temperatures. So that allowed us to actually create this feature we call dynamic temperature compensation. And it allows us to adjust the temperature or the sensitivity of the detector to match the temperature of the room to make sure that we have consistent catch performance. Because as the temperature gets close to body temperature, it gets difficult to catch the person. And then when it gets hotter than body temperature, it gets easier again, so we adjust back. Where some of our competitors just keep getting more sensitive as it gets hotter, and by the time it gets really hot, they start having false alarms. Our temperature compensation is dynamic, meaning it adjusts along with the temperature uh, of the room. Microwave adaptive processing. If we think about microwave and how it works, it's, it's an extreme to make a point. It isn't like sound, but it's kind of like sound. You know, you hear static, you hear a bunch of noise, and you try to hear the signal that's on top of it. And, and you know, the more noise you have, you have to turn up the volume and, and it gets a little hard to hear. 
Well, microwave signals are similar to that, but their noise is electrical noise like fans and motors and compressors and those types of things. So if you have a detector in a room that might have a fan, it's going to see the fan and it's going to see that there's, there's some sort of motion in the room. With some of our competitors' detectors, the microwave is going to be in alarm forever. As long as the fan is on, the microwave is in alarm. With microwave noise adaptive processing, our detectors can recognize that that is a signal that is repetitive. And it says, hey, a person can't make a signal like that. I'm going to ignore that. It's like squelch on an old radio, right? It adjusts the noise out so you only hear the good stuff so you can have consistent catch performance of that person walking through the room, whether the fan is on or the fan is off, we don't care. Anti-mass detection. Bosch detectors, our commercial series and our professional series have multiple levels of anti-mass detection. We can detect if somebody puts a box over the detector. We can detect if somebody tries to spray paint the detector. We can detect, and we do this in some uh, stores in the U.S., if somebody tries to smear uh, silicon sealant on the front of the detector. That's the latest way they're trying to break in. Hope there's no burglars listening. Well, we can detect those things and activate a trouble condition so that when you go to arm your store or your building and you leave, you have a trouble condition, you go out and you see a hack over the motion detector in the warehouse. Well, guess what? That's because somebody wants to come back and empty the warehouse and not be detected. Well, you remove the offending object and you catch the bad guy because of Bosch anti-mass detection. And that's available in our professional series and our commercial series detectors. When you think about Bosch, what do you think about? Reliability, robustness, long-term reliability. Our detectors last a really long time because we design them to do so. Things like these features of the covered circuit board, the covered electronics, uh, preventing dust from entering the, uh, the detector. This technology gives us a mean time between failure of over 100 years. The detectors are just going to go on the wall. They're going to keep working. They're going to just work forever, basically. 100 years to most of us is forever, right? Well, that's an overview of our detector line, our wall mount de uh, detector line, uh, motion detectors. I want to thank everybody for coming today and for listening to me talk about one of my favorite things in the world, which is motion detectors. We're going to open it up to some questions, and I'm going to turn it over to Elizabeth for a minute. All right, thanks, Tom. All right, we do have a few questions, so thank you for those who submitted them in the chat. Um, we still have some time for questions. If something comes to mind or you think of something, feel free to put in the chat. If we don't get to it uh, during this session, we'll be sure to email you a response afterwards. All right, so we've got three questions that came in, Tom. Um, the first one is, what's the difference between TriTech and DualTech? Ah, TriTech and DualTech. Uh, Dual tech, that's a phrase that we came up with as an industry, not Bosch, but as an industry, we came up with dual techs in the late 80s. And a dual tech combined a passive infrared de red detector and a microwave detector, both of which do a pretty good job of catching a person, but both of which have certain things that could cause a false alarm, like a passive infrared detector in those days was susceptible to changes in temperature that the space heater turns on, whatever, it could cause false alarm. That microwave was susceptible to things like fans and motors and those kinds of things that could cause a false alarm. But put them together, and they have a pretty good false alarm immunity because the PIR doesn't see the things that the microwave sees and vice versa. So that was a dual tech, a fairly simple PIR and a fairly simple microwave. microwave. What Bosch did is we added very high-level processing, things like that first-step processing things like that microwave adaptive processing to both technologies, which really brought it up a level. So that third technology is that processing. So it's PIR, microwave, and advanced processing that makes a tri-tech, and a dual-tech just doesn't have it. Great, thanks, Tom. All right, uh, next question. Uh, do our detectors have pulse count settings? Our detectors don't have pulse count settings. Uh, remember, we talked about pulse count and in, more, in a more simple detector, when somebody walks through the room, it creates these electro, electrical pulses that you can just count them and say, okay, I got three of them, that's an alarm. But we do a much more sophisticated analysis of the signal 
that the detector sees in order to make an alarm decision. So it works much better than pulse count, both on false alarm immunity and catch performance. Great, thank you. The questions are starting to roll in now too, so we got a few more. Um, professional series, why does it have two lenses? That is all about focal length. So the professional series can see up to 100 feet. And if you think about that in terms of you're looking at something with a zoom lens on your camera or with a mic, a, a, a pair of binoculars, you're looking at something far away versus something up close, you're zooming in and out. You're adjusting the focal length of your optical device. Well, that's what happens in the professional series. We have a lens that's a little closer to the detector, so it has a short focal length. We have a lens that's a little further away from the detector. It has a long focal length. So those are designed to make sure we have a consistent signal throughout the coverage pattern. The other thing that that does for us is we get a general idea of where the target is within the coverage pattern. So if we see a target in only the upper detector, we know it's far away. We see a, a target only in the lower detector, we know it's up close. We see one in both, we know it's in the middle. So we can get a kind of a feel for where the object is Combine that with our microwave technology, because remember, it uses that sensor data fusion. Combine those things together, and man, we can really make an accurate decision on, hey, that's a person, or no, that's a truck. <laughs> those kinds of things. All right. And our last question here, so unrelated to motion detectors, uh, does Bosch use the same EOL resistor value as radionics? Uh, well, yes, and that is because Bosch kind of is radionics. Um, all right, I'll just say it. Yesterday was my 34th anniversary of working in this very building. And uh, 30, 28 years ago, we acquired Radionics. And so, so Bosch and Radionics are the same company. It, it, we use a thousand ohm uh, resistor on most of our points. And then the same, the poppets, the, if you know Radionics, you know the term poppet, they have the same end of line resistor. So Bosch and Radionics are, are one in the same. Uh, we also have adjustable end line resistors on our panels. So if you happen to be taking over a system and it has different end line values, you can adjust that on a Bosch panel to uh, work with those end line resistors. You don't have to go find them. Great. All right, well that, um, looking at the chat, that is all the questions that have come through. Again, if you think of something else, just uh, be sure to put in the chat. We'll follow up after the session. But we would like to thank you again for taking 30 minutes out of your day to meet with us. If you have a project question or need help with an estimate, please contact Bosch. We've got the pre-sales number here. Um, also, stay in touch with us as we share new information about our products and solutions. Um, follow us on our Bosch Security and Safety Systems LinkedIn page, of course, our website, and then we'll be sure to share the recorded link to this video on our Bosch YouTube channel. So again, Tom, thank you so much for your time. Thank you to all the participants on the call and hope you have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks, Elizabeth, and thanks to everybody who joined us today. Enjoy the rest of your day.